Welcome all! In this outreach jam, we'll explore the experience, the experience of witnessing a disaster, the ways it affects us, and how the influence of the reconnected healing frequencies changes our very relationship with fear itself. Plus, we'll share with you an exclusive video clip from the upcoming Frederick Ponslev's interview. It's going to be premiering this Saturday right here on YouTube. And I'll have a short clip from our online course, The Portal. All of this coming up in today's RH Jam. Well, hello again. I am Anna Clavel. And if this is the first time with us, the Average Jam is our weekly program about topics are important to you, important to me, important to everyone in the Reconnective Healing community and family. Actually, let's call it family. We're fam. Um, we love sharing updates about Reconnective Healing. After all, this is what we're all about. We're all about these frequencies. In, that in exploring our relationship with the frequencies, we also explore topics and subjects and questions that come from you more often than not, and we tackle them here. And sometimes they just come to us in our day-to-day -day as we live in the frequencies. And hint, hint, we do have a program called Living in the Frequencies, and I'll be talking about that later. And uh, you don't have to miss a single episode. Not today, not tomorrow, next week, as we expand our offerings that are live, pre-recorded right here on YouTube. I want to invite you to you know it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and also please like us, share it. Let the world know that you're part of this fam. I'm learning lingo, so I'm going with fam today. Today, maybe later I'll say peeps or something. In any case, welcome to today's jam and we will be chatting as well. I want to greet everybody who's here with us today. Cecilia Sams, Lexi Alexander, let's see who's come and join us here. I saw Abdullah as well. Welcome, welcome. Today's uh, theme is one that is very uh, current. We are experiencing a, uh, a global uh, set of events. So uh, when are we not, you may argue, but it has a very important impact personally. And that's what I want to share with you coming up in today's theme, which is, as you may have guessed, how can we overcome our fears of a disaster? Now, um, disasters are something that arguably are going to happen one way or the other. I think it has a lot to do with our perception of and the baggage that this word has. Disaster, the root being, uh, something that is outside of our control. The stars cannot guide it. Disaster, no stars to guide. Um, we have, we, I think we can all agree that as in this picture, the world itself, whether you are in the front line or at home and you experience uh, have the experience of witnessing a disaster, whether it's through the media or uh, through uh, what, something that you read, something that you watch on TV. Yeah, granted, the people in the front line are uh, possibly far more compromised than we are when we're sitting at home experiencing this. Um, but yet it does affect everyone in the entire community who becomes a witness to it, whether it's real time as it's happening or whether it's as you're watching it on media. Uh, we are, after all, really a global community and whether we feel that there are differences between ourselves and others in other parts of the world, when there is a disaster, what we term something on the scale of a catastrophe, something that we may even call an act of God, there, there's a unifying force for all humans that we may feel ourselves and understand ourselves to be so suddenly vulnerable and so little in the face of the magnitude of what's uh, being revealed through nature. And in this case, for example, uh, as, as in this picture, how we can go from a moment of uh, per perfect harmony, coherence into a sudden extreme change in our lives, in our environment, in our atmosphere. Let me enlarge that. Because uh, many of us have had this experience of being in one place, one second, the next one upside down. 
Um, and uh, um, of course, I like to say here that, you know, disasters, uh, um, although today is really more about the disasters that uh, nature serves on a, on a regular basis and the ones that are man-made that are aiding this, the, the magnitude of what nature is serving, right, in its own cycles and progress through its energy cycles, right? Uh, yeah, there are the little disasters that come in our day-to-day -day life. And um, absolutely, those also impact how our relationship with the day, with ourselves, uh, take place. But when it, calls, when, when it comes to the ones that really shake us to the core, because we feel beyond vulnerable, we feel that we truly have no control. And here's what I like to share with you. I just returned... Uh, from Puerto Rico, and maybe many of you are aware that in the last 12 days, it has been a series of earthquakes. Um, I had lived uh, previously in um, Los Angeles for 20 years, so if you've ever lived in California or a si highly seismic area, you kind of have a very good inkling on how it feels, how it makes you feel, how what, can, what kind of preventive measures can be taken. Um, but unless you experience it, truly, you really don't have a full picture of what it's like to be in the middle of rocking Earth. Now, the first thing to take in consideration is like in the middle of, uh, in this case, for example, an earthquake, we lose trust instantly about our sense of safety. Does our certainty that we are on flat land, that we are on earth and grounded because the very ground is what gives. And that immediately affects the younger minds. Uh, that was my experience in the last 10, 12 days is the terrifying um, situation, how the, how the situation terrified, not only adults, of course, but the, the children lost a complete sense of uh, what to trust, what was part of the reality, what was part of the things beyond mom and dad or grandma, grandpa, uh, you know, the people who are the people who come through and, and, and you know you can trust as a child, the sense that the earth beneath them was no longer there, it was basically uh, air shattering for them. Of course, and for the parents, the, uh, the double fear of having their children uh, go undergoing this experience while undergoing their experience, them, experience themselves. So I found myself in an in expanded group of people who've never really experienced this type of shaking. The type of shaking that cracks open up in the walls, cracks open up in the ground, uh, things fall off the, sh the shelves, and knowing that you have no control while that shaking is going on, except the very few motions that um, have been uh, properly, uh, you know, um, um, what is it called, uh, advised by authorities and those who know what they're talking about, uh, about how to take shelter and how to protect yourself. But beyond that, the psyche of it is like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a constant replay of the shaking, the disbelief, the sense of, again, having no control, and then of feeling trapped. Because it goes from the understanding that here we are one second, and then the next second, for all we know, we're no longer there. It's, you start to look at the day-to-day -day as through a broken window, a window that may not even be real in a few seconds, it may come up a wall. And again, I'm using the, uh, the uh, example of an earthquake because that's what I just went through. Because every disaster presents itself uh, with its own set of um, fears. So your body, your body enters into its own mode and it goes into the mode of survival. Um, and I, I saw that across the board. I saw how by the second, third day of all this shaking, the, there was this tension, the stress, this tension that comes with knowing that we need to somehow try to survive what was still, what now we're seeing uh, shadows in every corner, every little thing that drops, every little thing that moves can become an earthquake, a real one, because honestly, it never, it never stops shaking for about five 
consecutive straight days, six days, uh, on different scales, uh, but everybody was feeling them. So it's like, I don't know if when you go into the ocean and maybe the, the, the waves are strong enough and you let your body jump with the waves and you move with them, it became a little bit like that to the point that you just did not know if the earth was really shaking or not, or if it was your body already getting ready to shake in case the shake came through. And I wanted to share this with you because it reminded me of when I first became fully aware of the reconnected healing frequencies in my body, how my body was started to adapt to what it was feeling, trying to explain and describe to myself, to itself, Oh, what is this tingling I feel here? Or what is this high-pitched noise I'm hearing? So I felt so privileged to be a witness to what was happening during the sequence of earthquakes, what was happening around me, and how I saw that uh, from a vantage point in which with the frequencies, through the frequencies, I had a certain degree of certainty. And that certainty, I will talk to you a little bit about in a, in a later, and I'll give you three observations that certainly uh, said put it in perspective for me immediately the moment that I realized it went from A, oh, they're shaking, B, oh, it is a quake, it is an earthquake, oh, three, it is a really large earthquake, four, everybody's running, A, and, and C, oh, did I lose? I think I lost a number there. Let's just call it five for the heck of it, right? And five, oh, I don't need to run. It's okay to be here, right here where I am. And that gave me an amazing certainty. So, and that knee-jerk reaction, you become that ticking bomb, that anything may go wrong at any given time. Uh, and you start watching, you start watching for the little signs. It, it, and I think that's human nature. I think it's human nature because it's not that you then want to forecast what's happening next. It's just that lack of control, that not knowing when the next one is going to hit triggers then this need to be looking out for what might be the next dooms point. And I, 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 I saw how people just went without sleep. They went without sleep for days because they did not know when was it going to happen again. They still could not trust fully that their bodies would warn that danger was coming, that the shaking was coming. Now, we have, and I found myself in this choice, in the middle of all these things that started to crumble, and in my own neighborhood, in my own, um, in my own house where I was with my family, the, pro the progression and expansion of cracks and uh, trying to determine what may be safe, what might not be safe. The certainty that came via the reconnective healing frequencies allowed me to simply be. And in that presence, allow not only myself, but those around me to be more, to become alert, but in a different way, in a way that helped them restore for themselves calm. So we could approach a situation from a vantage point of calm and uh, alertness, but calmness, not the madness that was truly permeating everything else. And it really starts by becoming aware of the reconnected healing frequencies. And I will definitely tell you a little bit more about this, how this changed with, from day to day and the progress of it. And I've summed it up into three, three, let me change hands, three very simple things that helped me and can help anyone understand that certainty, determine that certainty, and then be able to see these fears from that vantage point and let those fears not only as I found myself, it's not being fearless, it's something completely different, it's becoming fear free. Free from the side effects, all the side effects of fear. 
everything that comes through with that baggage, with a train, that fear that immediately escalates, it picks up speed and before you know it, it's ramming through every wall, through reconnective healing and just being present in these frequencies. It went from what everything was going on around me to knowing what being fear free truly is. It's that certainty that comes through it. And it's our presence that makes the difference. And as I said, I have these three observations that I'm going to share with you about how is it possible then perhaps to detach from fear through knowing this certainty, from recognizing what this certainty is. First though, I want to share a beautiful video about how language itself may need to be rethought if we intend to evolve into this humanity we are meant to be. Coming up right now. Now, as you know, January is going to be our portal featuring month and I could not be prouder because yes, guys, to those of you who have done this online course, I had the great privilege and honor of developing it and co-creating it with Dr. Eric Pearl and Jillian Fleer. And let me tell you, it's, it's really, it's a standalone. It is something that you can watch anytime. And I had the deepest, most amazing experience, not only uh, co-creating it, but directing it and ultimately editing and creating a lot of the animation. And this particular clip is one of my favorite animated segments. Not only is the message beautiful, thank you, Jillian Fleer, but the animation is one that really touched me. I hope you like it. Here it is. Have you ever wondered why people who return to life after having been declared legally dead or having what is commonly referred to as a near-death experience so very consistently report that there was no language. There was no language to describe what they vividly experienced, colors they had never seen, fragrances that they had never smelled, insights and understandings that they had never dreamed of, abilities to see and communicate beyond anything previously understood, and love, love beyond definition or description. For the clearest conveyance of these things, we will need to evolve a nonlinear linguistic and most likely non-linguistic communication system first steps? We are in them now. When we are learning reconnective healing, we begin experiencing an awareness, a knowingness that reaches beyond our current understanding and experiences. And it is through this that we discover our true timeless existence. Oh, I hope you like that. And uh, I also want to uh, send a here a nod out that we are starting to understand a lot more how to convey this knowingness, the certainty about the, the maybe our dependence on language is something that will start to change as we allow this new evolution to take place in us, in all of humanity, but definitely with reconnective healing and everybody and anybody who interacts with these frequencies in awareness. And that is what Costa Rica and that amazing program we're going to jumpstart there is all about. Guys, I my understanding is that uh, registrations are closed already, but will definitely update you about what the course brings on board and I will be sharing with you in the coming weeks a few of our findings. I don't want to delay things anymore. I I know a lot of you here are here to see Frederick Ponslov, Mr. Ponslov, who gave us an amazing exclusive interview and he has a lot to say about how to ride this wave 
which is the wave in many ways that I described, the very physical one that the planet was releasing through an earthquake, but also the energies that come in reconnective healing, the information wave that comes with reconnective healing and the frequencies themselves, because they and us create an atmosphere of trust. And here it is, Mr. Fred Ponslov. My name is Fred Ponslov. I find that if I'm stuck in something or stuck with an actor trying to help them break through things, if I just sort of allow myself for an answer to surface, it'll surface. Uh, and, and Solomon talks about that, you know, your instinct is really the sum total of all experience of all mankind. And if you tap into that, the answers will surface. He always used to say, I don't have your answers, you have your answers. I'm here to help you let those answers surface for yourself. And I think that's a, an invaluable tool. Uh, you become the creator of your life. You know, you, it's your adventure. It's nobody else's adventure. And you just have to trust that you've been here for a reason and that you're going to surf these waves of life, not to stretch a metaphor too much, uh, uh, to find your own answers. You become very self-reliant, you know. Uh, if you look to others for your answers, they're never going to be your answers. It's going to be their answers, filtered through their life. First of all, I think everybody has access to it. I think every mine just tends to be a little louder when I allow it. You know, it just gets out there more. But everybody has that connection to the other side. So. How do you deepen that? How do you allow that to surface? And I think everybody, that's what everybody's really fighting to find a way of how, how can I fully experience this existence without a lot of negativity? And But sometimes the negativity is there for a reason. It's like if the hurdles are low, you don't grow very much. You put the hurdles higher and you leap over them, the stronger you become and the more self-reliant you become. So sometimes what seems like an obstacle early on is really all to your benefit. I mean, I'm sure that everyone's had the experience where you got, had this never happened to me, I never would have gotten here to this point, you know, and you have to trust that those moments are surfacing for a reason. Uh, and you can either be a victim to them or you can victor, you know, become a victor from it. Uh, and it's like a psychic muscle that just gets stronger. And you've begun to trust yourself, you know, that you do have the answers. And I think that's the biggest message of Solomon is that you have all the answers in the universe already inside of you. You know, now how do we get to them? And I, ultimately, I think that's instinct. And as I said, Fred's interview, it's going to premiere this Saturday right here on our YouTube channel. So again, what should I say right here? Subscribe, share, like, because that will enable us to be able to program our channel with meaningful content, content that you want to see and content that, you know, ultimately it is important because it is content that anyone who watches benefits even as we are right here even as i am just right here talking about our topic for today we're in exchange with this amazing incredible reconnective healing frequencies and as i promised here are these three observations that i just summed up from my own personal experience while finding myself in the middle of a, an earthquake swarm the first one is like becoming aware of the reconnective frequencies, reconnective healing frequencies. With that very first moment in which the awareness, you're in full awareness of this, it immediately creates, uh, the best way to perhaps describe it is like a buffer. It's a buffer between whatever is going on around you without eliminating it or ignoring it and what your experience of that is. It allows you then to open, allow 
yourself to open the entire panoramic view of everything and all possibilities and potential, you can suddenly see my second point, which is be the flow. Now, I want to remind us who are here that becoming aware of the frequencies. If you are new to the RH Jam or Reconnective Healing, at this point, I'd like to encourage you to watch any of our Feel the Frequencies meditations because it will have a wonderful one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction with the frequencies given by our practitioners and our, our teachers. And you can experience them and you can experiment yourself by yourself uh, what interacting with the frequencies is uh, as a tangible there's a tangible part aspect to them all uh, to each one of these experiences uh, and it's in that interaction that we see that we there is a flow there is a flow of information any time we become aware of the frequencies we are opening a portal we are connecting to something that is the more, that what is, the everything that is and is. I mean, for lack of a better word, here you go, language. We are limited by language. So again, until we are be able to transcend our dependency on this type of, of language patterns, we might find ourselves having to reuse, repeat, restate, trying to find the best way to describe just uh, an experience that it, it really defies it. It is a challenge most of the time. So to number two, this flow that I'm talking about is that is the entire flow of information as it pours in, in your awareness. And as you recognize that this is the flow, the flow of everything that is, we need to be willing to let go of the expectations of what is it that we want to see there and immerse ourselves instead in the everything that comes through. And I mentioned this because I also, um, in the inspiration of these last uh, three, uh, three weeks, I also wrote a blog and I put the link beneath called The Certainty of What Is about an experience that happened a week before the earthquake uh, uh, storm started. So I encourage you to read that too, because it, it, it's a wonderful preamble to what I'm saying here. When you are devoid of expectations, when you're looking at this flow and you are able, number three, to observe without interpretation, what is needed becomes apparent. It's not when you're looking to find an answer. It's just that the question and the answer are exactly the same thing. Our minds and the way that we uh, use our language tells us that there's A that precedes the B that precedes the C. Yet, in these are concepts, these are the limitations of living in dimensional, in a dimensional space, time, with height, and limitations of scale as well, of perception, when in fact none of these things that we feel are divided and separated are real at all. So. Observing with that interpretation, this entire flow, this pool, this field of information is that at first may feel external as you're exploring it. It actually is your co-creation. You, you, we, each of us has the active part in it is being active and passive at the same time. Let it allows them to let come to the surface that what you need as part of your experience and that is what certainty is ultimately and this is as best as I can personally describe it because I I the fact that the earthquake was a challenge to our concept of what is real what is solid what can be trusted your mind allows to see things in a very thin, precise license. I'm sure many of you have heard and hope and maybe some of you have experienced that your life flashes before your eyes. Uh, and uh, that was very common for a lot of people. And they shared this with me in the last uh, five, uh, sorry, eight days since it started. So that certainty happens when you are not telling it what you want or looking to get a specific answer, you just know because it raises up for you. It kind of like flags itself for you and go, eh, 
I'm here. This is the one. And you immediately know. You recognize it. Okay? So how you know it's part of what it is that is meaningful to you is that at this point, we all develop a way to communicate with the frequencies. Now, how each of us does it, it's, it's personal. It's a personal relationship after all with the intelligence that guides these frequencies and the frequencies. So we each develop a way that it alerts you to anything. To some of us, that certainty comes through seeing external numbers. Maybe it's a sequence of threes, maybe it's a sequence of ones, and then immediately we recognize that there's a message here, there's information, pay attention, this is for you. For some of us, uh, it's uh, the continuum. The continuum is there or we just surf it and then whatever needs to happen it becomes apparent i need uh sometimes i am in so many things doing so many things at the same time i need all lights to come on for me to for me to pay attention sometimes guys i don't know if that happens to you but for me all the lights come on and then i know i better be paying attention ultimately ultimately to transcend this fear through certainty it really, it really boils down to our desire, our desire to let go, to let go of trying to direct and command and tell the situation what needs to happen or fix things of control it. What better example than getting caught in an earthquake and knowing, knowing with certainty that the only control that exists is that letting go allows you to be fully present, not only in the frequencies, but for those who may need you in your immediacy, but also through the distance that the, the, the global local, as Jillian called it yesterday in a conversation, that happens with those of us who care about us, but they're not there with us. So by being present, we allow for the certainty to blossom, not only for ourselves, for the calm to spread to everyone else around us. And guys, we are running out of time. And I want to leave you with a thought. If you're an alumni, oh my goodness, you may want to examine and explore our Living in the Frequencies program, which starts on January 21st, because it is about exploring and expanding in that personal reconnection uh, relationship with this reconnected healing frequency so that each of us develop that languaging that communication our personal communication with the intelligence that guides this entire approach to frequencies themselves and here we go we gotta say goodbye but only for a few seconds because by magic, I'm right back here. I want to thank, I thank um, Lexi Alexander again and Cecilia Stamps for being so amazing and helping us with the chat. And I want to thank everybody in the chat. Let's see, Geo why full hello resource yourself thank you for the beautiful comment about the animations i hey i understand it you know the animation should be there just to be like a component and a um an add-on just complementary to the core to the to, to the important part which is the message right but gee it felt good to share with you guys that i did that one in any case, guys, the definitive experience is the one experience. And I'll put a link below so you can go and check out uh, your next, our next Catalyst programs throughout the world. So go and check them out if you're ready to move from the portal. And guys, let me point in the other direction here, there. First hour is free from the portal. So if you haven't seen this amazing online program that you're truly directed, dive in send me an email let me know what you think and i encourage you guys that if you want to participate in this program if you have an event to announce if you have an experience that you would love to share with us please just write to my email which i put in the very last screen so you gotta stay because i'm gonna put information about living in the frequencies next and then my email so you can contact me once again thank you all Thank you to Frederick Ponslov, and we'll see you next week right here on the Outrage Jam.